In this lesson, we're going to look at the different ways that we can use the digital outputs and digital inputs of the camera to be able to show results from our inspection that we created. We'll start by looking and reviewing the configuration of the actual IOs themselves in the setting menus. Next, we'll look at how to set up the outputs, the digital outputs on the cameras based on the inspection results that we're using. Then we'll learn how to use the inputs that are coming into the camera to integrate into our application. Let's start by logging back onto our camera. We'll begin by making sure that our inputs and outputs are configured the way we need them for this application. We start by going back up to the configuration menu, which is the small gear icon on the top right of the screen. We'll open the digital inputs and outputs tab to see our I.O. This is currently how my I.O. is configured. In this case, for the sake of our example, I would like to set the I.O. point 4 as an output. I will also set I.O. point 5 as an output. Remember, depending on the variant of camera you use, these inputs and outputs will correspond to what's available for that camera. You will also notice that in this case, IO1 is configured as an output for our flash, and IO3 is configured as a trigger input for our camera to trigger the input of our application and the execution of our application. Then, let's close the system settings, go back up to the top left corner, and select Configuration from our drop-down menu. This is the current application we presently have configured. Next, we need to go to the Insert a Tool, scroll down, and click on the Set Outputs tool. This will insert the Set Outputs tool into our configuration for this inspection. You'll notice there are only two outputs that are configured corresponding to the outputs we set in the system configuration. In this case, IO.4 and IO.5 have been configured as outputs. Now, we want to begin by clicking on the first of the IO points, in this case, IO4. We want to make sure that we're able to report the results of any of these given outputs and results from the tools that we have available. In this case, we're going to use inspection processing to make sure that anything that's reported as false triggers this output to go on. Simply click on that output. If we wish to, we can actually put a mathematical equation on the side of this inspection result. In this case, though, we're not going to use that. We're just going to use the straightforward processing result. For IO5, again, clicking on it will open up all the available measurements and results from all of the tools that we configured. What we're going to do in this one is we're going to go back and check on the degree of match from our Find Object tool. Clicking on this tool will allow us to use this result. But what we want to do is we want to click on a mathematical result to make sure that it's equivalent to something. So what we're going to do is click on the less than and say that if it's less than 75%, we want that output to go true and turn on. Now, we have two basic inspection results configured. Again, you can configure more in your system's configuration digital I.O. settings by simply changing what that I.O. is dedicated to, therefore allowing you to set up additional I.O. corresponding to the different inspections you're using. Next, Let's take a look at how we can combine inputs and outputs to create logic. Let's start by inserting the Get Inputs tool. Now what this tool will do if it's set to true as a run condition is it will actually bring the inputs into the system and into this configuration so that we can use those as part of our application. But be aware that these do execute sequentially. So you want to make sure you drag 
the Get Inputs tool in front of the Get Outputs tool if you plan to use it as a part of your application. If it's going to be used prior to this in this application, you'll want to make sure you drag it even higher above the tool it's going to be used in. Now, let's go back to our Set Outputs tool. Click on the wrench to be able to make changes to this application. In this case, let's go to IO4. We'll click on IO4 and we'll combine Get Input 0 and Inspection Processing. This will now AND these two together and as long as they're both true, the output will be true. You will notice if you go down to the results down here in the bottom of the screen that IO4 is false and that's because I do not have an input connected to get inputs zero. Therefore, the output to that will remain false. We can now trigger the combination of the get input zero and the inspection processing together. This way, we can use logic that's coming in externally from another source for example, if there's a process taking place simultaneously that must be executing in order for the camera's inspection to be valid, we can combine these two together using the AND statement to make sure that the inspection is valid. This is just one example of how you can combine inputs and outputs as well as other tool results together. For example, using IO5, clicking on this tool, we have it set to less than 75 degrees. We can also go in and make the same combination with another tool by com combining that using an AND statement again with the results of the check object tool processing. Again, using an AND statement, we can now combine that with the results of the fine tool processing. Now, as long as both of these tools execute properly and pass successfully, we'll get a true on that output. We can combine multiple tools together, again like this, using ands or ors, or even taking the results from within a tool from a mathematical equation or mathematical results and combine them together with these mathematical operands to be able to create full equations from these results and then combine them to an I.O. point on the tool, on the camera. This then allows us to use a digital I.O. point as an actual result indicator from the application. Now let's try and test the input and output configuration we've created. In this case, I've now forced the input 0 to be on. If we go to our outputs, you'll notice that IO4, which was a combination of input 0 as well as our tool processing, ANDed together, is now showing true. If I go ahead and loop the image, anything I do to block the image at this point, which we can see by going to my get image, will cause the outputs that we've set to change state. In this case, I'm going to simply cover the object and you can see how they are changing back to a false state. This means that the actual I.O. on the camera itself will also be changing in this state from on to off or off to on depending on how you set the logic as straight or inverted. Now let's go ahead and run our application in monitor mode to see how it actually behaves. We'll start by putting it in run mode. Next, let's go ahead and vary the image and watch how it tracks and passes or fails. As you can see, the part is being tracked and it's showing true results when stationary indicating that it is able to track the part and find the part. You'll also notice our outputs are still both reading true unless we create a false state. 
I'll go ahead and block the part, and you can see how IO4 and IO5 will change states based on the logic we programmed. As you can see, the check object tool is failing, and therefore, we're losing both tools because of the logic we programmed into them. And remember, when blocking what the finder is actually using, you will lose the part altogether and not be able to locate it in the image. So in this lesson, just to review, to set our digital I.O. to show results from the camera or bring inputs in from an outside source, we start by making sure our digital I.O. is configured in the system settings. Then we insert the Set Input and Set Output tools into our configuration. Once that's done, we can go to the Set Output tool and use a combination of logic along with tool results, along with even the digital inputs coming into the camera, to create the logic necessary to trigger our digital outputs.